Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with apple hand pies. That's right, I'm going to show you my patented method for making perfect hand pies, also known as turnovers. And I know you're thinking, those look too perfect to be homemade. I bet those are store-bought. Well, thank you. That is the best compliment you can get for these things. It means you made them so real, they look fake. And even though I'm going to fill mine with apple, this technique's going to work with any filling you like. So let me show you how this works. It's surprisingly easy. So like I said, I went with an apple filling, so I'm going to peel some apples. I know some of you prefer the parry knife method. I really think a peeler works better for these. I go around the top like that, and then I make nice, big, wide peels around the side. And for me, that's the easiest way to peel an apple. Unless you're going to do a ton, then you need one of those cool turny things. Okay, so once the apple's peeled, we're going to go ahead and quarter that. And then we're going to take the core out, which is pretty easy. You can do it this way. Just hold the apple and pull the parry knife towards your thumb like that, being very careful to stop before it goes into your thumb. And if you're slightly less coordinated, this is a good method. Just put it on its side and make a little 45 degree cut like that. And that works too. So once you take the core out, we're gonna take each quarter, cut it into three pieces, and then cut it into chunks. For four hand pies, two large apples should be enough. Mine were kind of smaller, I did three. So I had a little extra filling, but that's fine. At that point, I put a couple tablespoons of butter in a heavy skillet over medium heat until it got a beautiful toasty brown. So just keep an eye on it. And when that foam gets a nice little golden nutty brown color, go ahead and throw in your apples. We're gonna give them a little pinch of salt, give them a little stir in that hot butter. I'm also gonna add some white sugar and just a little touch of brown sugar. And then at this point I made a conscious decision to go with a soft filling. Some people like to make their pies and turnovers with raw apples, just tossing it with the sugar and just relying on the baking time to cook the apple. Here I was going for something much softer, almost like an apple jam or an apple butter, okay? So I cook mine nice and soft. Those little chunks of apple will kind of swell up and break down, swell up, swell up and break down. And once they got to that point, I dumped in a nice healthy dose of cinnamon. I'm gonna mix that in. And by the way, I wish you could smell the aroma. Just such an incredible bonus. You get to smell this stuff as it cooks. It's really half the fun. And then last but not least, I put in a little tiny splash of water just to deglaze the pan a little bit, soften these apples up just a little more. Because like I said, I really want an apple buttery, jammy applesauce type filling, not a firm piece of apple we're going to bite into. All right, just personal preference. You only want to cook yours for a minute or not at all? Go ahead. That's perfectly legit. But anyway, to summarize, you're going to cook your apples in butter, sugar, and cinnamon until they're as soft as you like. So I went all the way to the soft and sticky stage. So once that's done, I'm going to transfer that onto a plate to cool while we roll out our dough. Speaking of which, here it is. You're going to need some pie dough. And I will tell you at this point that the one I'm using here is a new secret recipe called butter crust that I'm going to unveil next week. So you're going to stay tuned for that. It was unbelievable. So we're going to take about four ounces of whatever dough you're using, enough to make about an eight inch round. It doesn't have to be exact. These are hand pies. Nobody's going to measure your hand pie. Okay. And also don't worry about perfect circles. Perfect circles are annoying. Get it close. It just needs to be circle-ish. And once you do have an eight inch circle-ish shaped piece of dough, we're gonna go ahead and spoon in about a third to a half a cup of filling, right, right near the center. We're gonna fold over the dough, but we're gonna fold it over about an inch short, just like that. We're gonna tap it down around the filling with our fingertips, nice and firmly. That is the first of three levels of crust security. The second's gonna be this. I want you to go around and just fold over the overlap, just like that, all right, nice and tight, all the way around. And once that's been folded over and pressed down, we're going to go to the third phase, which is the crimping. And I know they say crimping ain't easy, but that's so not true. Crimping is easy, all right? Take the thumb and forefinger of one hand, press it in, and push in between with the forefinger of your other hand. And you will have a perfect, so good, it looks fake, crimped crust. So you're pushing with two fingers and you're pressing in between with the other. Your thumb is moving into the indentation that your forefinger just made, and it really is that easy. So once you're folded and fully crimped, we're going to transfer these onto a lined baking sheet, and then we're ready for the egg wash. Some beaten egg with a little bit of milk. I'm going to pan it on generously, and then we're also going to sprinkle these with sugar. If you're feeling savory, of course, you'll skip this step, or you'll substitute something like a finely grated Parmesan cheese, or maybe some herbs and spices, something like that. And then once they are sugared, we're going to go ahead and put three ventilation holes in the top, and this is key. If you don't make those holes, the steam will not be able to escape. Your pie will rupture. You'll lose all those delicious caramely juices from the middle. And your oven could possibly explode. All right. Once we've achieved proper ventilation, we're going to go ahead and pop those in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes to a half hour until they look browned, crispy, and gorgeous. Look at those. 
Just a beautiful specimen of a hand pie. I really want to eat one right now, but they're so molten hot inside. Do not try it. Let them sit for 15 minutes. You will enjoy it much, much more. And after that, though, all bets are off. I bit into that thing and I was so happy. Like I said, I went with a very soft, almost like an apple jam or apple butter filling. But again, if you want the chunks of apple, like a traditional apple pie filling, go for it. And you can see here the extreme flakiness of that dough. That is the new butter crust pie dough I'm going to show you next week. But like I said, no matter what dough you use, no matter what fillings you use, this technique should work perfectly. All right? So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.